Good Thursday evening, folks. Chief Meteorologist Tim Pandagis here with you. October 3rd, 2024. We're talking about major Hurricane Kirk and Tropical Storm Leslie. That is now also forecast to become a major hurricane in the next couple of days. Now, Kirk does become the season's third Category 4 storm. We had Beryl, we had Helene, and now we've got Kirk. Leslie is forecast to become the fourth major hurricane, topping out of the Category 3 within its forecast period. And there are odd things to take a look at in the Gulf of Mexico as we get into next week. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. There is an area to watch there that's uh, odds of development have actually increased with the latest NHC outlook. So let's start with Kirk, major hurricane, 130 mile per hour winds. Gust to 160. This is a specimen to watch on satellite imagery, and the good news is it is not anywhere near land. Now, you could call this a fish storm if you want, but it's affecting more than just the fish. There are shipping channels here that will be affected to reroute around it. So there will be people affected, but just no landfall happening with this storm. You look at it closely and just look at how symmetrical that that eye is. 130 mile per hour winds put you at a category four storm. And it's likely not done strengthening just yet. I think it's max intensity is supposed to get up to 145, which would put it at a middle to higher end category four storm based on the Saffir Simpson scale. Now, right behind it, we've got Leslie, which is interesting enough that's still getting its act together, despite still some shear coming in from the northwest, thanks to the outflow of Kirk. But as this picks up speed and moves away, there'll be more of a gap in between the two and it'll be less affected in terms of Leslie there. So it should intensify and probably rapidly as well. So here's the track on Kirk takes it pretty much to the north. Still a major hurricane down to a category two by a Sunday and then turning to the north and east in the North Atlantic. It's still a category one storm, likely a huge system at this point and could be a problem for the United Kingdom and maybe the Iberian Peninsula and western portions of Europe as we get into next week. So very interesting to watch that there. And then right on its heels, as I mentioned, is, is Leslie. We've got a tropical storm now 50 miles per hour, but expected to peak by early next week as a category three storm, major hurricane, 115 mile per hour winds. But again, this one's safely out at sea. That's not the only thing we're talking about. As I mentioned earlier at the start of this video, we have increased the odds for potential tropical development here in the Gulf of Mexico. This was down to 30 a couple days ago. It was at 50, so it's decreased and now is increasing those chances. Still not all that high, all that exceptionally high at 40 percent, but still nonetheless will watch it. In the verbiage from the National Hurricane Center, it says a trough of low pressure sitting over the uh, Gulf of Mexico will try to maybe congeal some energy together and organize it into a named system, potentially 40% chance of that occurring in the next seven days. By the way, if you're wondering what name that would be, it would be Milton. Large area to keep an eye on here. Now, it may be from a wave that's coming in out of the western, <clears throat> excuse me, northwestern Caribbean, but there may be another player entering the field. I want to introduce you to what's left of Tropical Depression 11E. This is in the Eastern Pacific Basin. It never got itself organized enough to get a name. So that's why it still has a number with it. And it's just the remnants of a tropical depression. But it's sitting here over, over the coast of Southern Pacific Mexico and really causing issues, rainfall, mudslides, flooding, that sort of thing there. I wanna show you something interesting here. The leftover energy here, the vorticity, the spin, where does that go? Now, spaghetti plots on that leftover energy shows two camps of thought. One that drifts it to the southwest and eventually well to the west, keeping it offshore and I don't maybe restrengthening it eventually down the line here well to the west. Or just as many models do see it tracking over interior Mexico. Now, a lot of it will be lost, but maybe some of the remnant energy makes it into the southern Gulf of Mexico Bay of Campeche and aids in some form what may develop in the Gulf of Mexico next week. Now, I know what you're thinking here. What happens if something develops in the Eastern Pacific and transits into a new basin or vice versa, something in the Atlantic transit in, transitioning into the East Pac? What happens? Well, since this storm did not strengthen enough to get a name, it doesn't really matter because it's just, it's just energy that's moving into another basin. But if it did have a name, here's how that would work. Moving between basins here. Now, if, if there was a name, it keeps the same name between basins. 
if the surface circulation survives that land crossing. Now, we'll get a new name if the surface circulation dissipates crossing over land and then redevelop. So that's how it would work. It has happened before. I can't off the top of my head think of the last time it happened, but it's been somewhat recently within the last couple of seasons we were talking about this. But that's the process that would go through in terms of naming that piece of energy. Now, I want to show you something here um, that we've revisited back and forth, the two long-range computer models, global models, the American GFS and the European in the red. So what we're going to show here is the plots for the isobars, the surface pressure. And watch what happens here. We'll start it off on Saturday. Nothing out there. As we progress a few days to early next week, modeling goes, oh, okay, something's developing here. And then we go out to next Wednesday, less than a week from today, and both the GFS in the yellow and the European in the red in their most recent model runs show some sort of tropical development here. Will this verify? Too early to tell still, but this is a solution that has been backed off of and then revisited multiple times by the long range models, meaning there's something to be suspicious about in the Gulf of Mexico next week. Where exactly it develops, uncertain, but a lot of the models here have been showing something, not building from the south to the north like we saw with Helene and that we see with so many storms, but something maybe from the southwest pushing to the north and east, maybe even moving over the entire span of the Gulf of Mexico and being a slow mover. So what we do know right now is that it looks to be a lot of tropical moisture at least making it into Florida next week, causing a lot of rainfall. Will it be from a named tropical storm? Possible. Something to certainly watch as we go forward in time there and keep a very close eye on. That's the latest on today's tropical update. Uh, you can find me on social media. I'm on all the platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday.